Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asian Newsline and heard the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 16th of October. Umar Abdullah takes oath as Chief Minister of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Jashankar calls for introspection between Pakistan and India during SCO meet. And Hasina's party accuses new Bangladesh government of shielding criminals. And now for all the details. Umar Abdullah on Wednesday took oath as the Chief Minister of India's Jammu and Kashmir following the victory of his National Conference Party in the Maiden Assembly election after the abrogation of Article 370. Umar Abdullah, who takes over as Chief Minister for a second term, is the third generation of the Abdullah family to occupy the office, after his grandfather, Sheikh Abdullah, and father, Farooq Abdullah. India bloc leaders attended the event in full strength. The Congress, however, said it has decided not to join the Council of Ministers in the newly formed Jammu and Kashmir government as the party was unhappy that statehood was not restored to the Union territory. The Congress has faced increased pressure from the Allies after it suffered an unexpected loss in Haryana and underperformed in Jammu and Kashmir. I, Omar Abdullah, do swear in the name of God that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will faithfully and conscientiously discharge my duties as Chief Minister for the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, and that I will do right to all manner of people in accordance to the Constitution and the law, without fear or favor, affection or ill will. Meanwhile, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti said that the people in Kashmir have been witnessing a difficult time after the abrogation of Article 370 and now the new government must bring in its first resolution concerning it. The Union Territory was under the presidential rule since 2018 after the Bharatiya Janata Party withdrew its support from the coalition government with Mehbooba Mufti-led People's Democratic Party. <laughs> खासकर 2019 के बाद जम्मू कश्मीर के लोगों को बड़े जख्म लगे हैं और हम उम्मीद करते हैं जो सरकार बनी है वो सबसे पहले इन जख्मों का मरहम करेगी एंड amid an escalating row between india and canada canadian sikh leader jagmeet singh on tuesday demanded a ban on the rss and sanctions against the indian diplomats Singh is the leader of the New Democratic Party and had in the past supported the ruling government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The NDP leader, who is known for his pro-Khalistan stance at a news conference in Ottawa, requested an emergency meeting with the Public Security Committee to better understand if there are other steps they can take to protect the Canadians. Singh called RSS a violent, militant and terrorist organization from India that operates in Canada and in other countries as well. Meanwhile, terming Canada's allegations extremely serious, U.S. has asked India to cooperate with Ottawa's investigation into the killing of six separatist leader Hardeep Singh Nidja. However, India has maintained that the Canada's allegations are absurd and has rejected the Canadian PM's allegations. While attending the SCO meet in Pakistan, India's Foreign Minister S. A. Shankar on Wednesday called for introspection if friendship between the two nations has fallen short or good neighborliness is missing. In his address at the 23rd meeting of the SCO Council of Heads of Government in Islamabad, Jay Shankar said, if one would fast forward from the inception of the charter to the situation today, these goals and these tasks are even more crucial. He termed cross-border terrorism, extremism and separatism as the three evils that hinder trade and people-to-people -people relations between countries. 
Jay Shankar said that it's important that SCO members renew their resolve to attain the objectives of the organization, which means recognizing the current constraints on our cooperation and focusing on the pathway forward. It has been nearly a decade since a foreign minister from India has visited Pakistan amid frosty relations between the two nuclear powers. Both sides had said no bilateral meetings was planned. Afghanistan Taliban has banned imposed several restrictions on seizing power in 2021. And the latest on the list is a ban on news media from publishing images of all living things. Reports have suggested the Taliban's morality ministry has announced the latest move. The implementation will be gradual and officials will focus on persuading people that such images are against Islamic law. Saiful Islam Khyber, the spokesman for the Ministry for the Propagation of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice, has stated. Under the previous Taliban rule from 1996 to 2001, television was banned nationwide. The media industry in Afghanistan has suffered since the Taliban takeover, with the number of media employees dropping from 8,400 to 5,100, including only 560 women who have faced severe restrictions dubbed gender apartheid by the United Nations. Former Premier Sheikh Hasina led Awami League on Tuesday accused the Muhammad Yunus led interim government of shielding criminals, which is alleged attack their party cadres in the protest which led to Hasina's ouster. In a scathing attack on Facebook, the political party said with the Interior Ministry issuing notification that miscreants associated with the anti discrimination movement cannot be prosecuted. The interim government is implying that those responsible for the deaths of thousands of policemen, Awami League leaders and workers are being given impunity for their actions. The statement added, Bangladesh will soon re-establish democracy following which they will revoke the indemnity to bring to justice the murderers, looters, arsonists and those who have destroyed the country's wealth. Sri Lanka's newly elected president, Anura Kumara Desanayake, will embark on a visit to New Delhi at the invitation of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Lanka's Foreign Minister Vijita Hirat said on Tuesday. Addressing the reporters, Hirat, however, added the visit will only take place after the parliamentary poll scheduled for November 14 in the island nation. The visit will be the first by President Desanayake to any foreign nation since he assumed office earlier in September. Notably, India's Foreign Minister S. A. Shankar was the first foreign official to meet the Sanaike after his election to the top office. The Marxist-leaning leader's political party, JVP, is traditionally considered close to China. However, the Sanaike has said the island nation under his governance will adopt a neutral foreign policy not getting sandwiched between Asian giants, India and China. Gujarat's minor ports are playing a pivotal role in driving local industries and enhancing the state's economic efficiency. With a focus on port-led development, Gujarat is leveraging its strategic location and well-developed infrastructure to become a global trade hub. Take a look. Gujarat, a key economic hub, leverages its 1,600-kilometer coastline to fuel trade and industry growth thanks to a well-developed infrastructure and business-friendly policies. With 49 operational ports, including the central government-managed Deendayal port and 48 non-major ports under the Gujarat Maritime Board, the state leads in cargo throughput. Handling about 41% of India's maritime cargo, Gujarat's ports serve as vital gateways driving economic growth and boosting global connectivity. When Narendra Modi became Chief Minister of Gujarat in 2001, the state's coastal potential was underutilized due to poor infrastructure. He envisioned transforming Gujarat into a global trade hub by developing minor ports and modernizing existing ones. The cities of Porbandar, Bhavnagar, Surat and Valsad have been shortlisted for port-led development based on key criteria such as proximity to deep water access, availability of ample waterfront space and strong connectivity to road and rail networks. These locations demonstrate significant potential 
to support sustainable industrial growth, making them ideal for driving economic progress through port infrastructure and trade. Gujarat's strong road connectivity and maritime development have significantly contributed to its high ranking in the Logistics Ease Across Different States Leeds Index. At the vibrant Gujarat Global Summit VGGS 2024, Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel noted that under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership, a new era of prosperity has emerged through port development, emphasizing Gujarat's commitment to ports for prosperity and ports for progress. Gujarat's minor seaports have become lifelines for local entrepreneurs like Ajay Singh, who have thrived due to the development of Hazira Port, a versatile multi-cargo hub in South Gujarat. The growth of these minor ports is helping industries save on transportation and cargo handling costs, enhancing efficiency and competitiveness. Over the past decade, traffic at Gujarat's non-major ports has grown by 5%. In 2023-24, Gujarat Maritime Board Ports handled 449.26 MMT million metric tons of cargo, up from 416.36 MMT the previous year. This growth is credited to non-major ports, which have boosted exports in agriculture and manufacturing, attracted investment, and spurred rapid growth in sectors like petrochemicals, textiles and automobiles, strengthening Gujarat's industrial base through special economic zones. आज की डेट में कंडला में ये जो डेवलपमेंट हुआ है मुंद्रा के अंदर जो डेवलपमेंट हुआ है तो गैंग्सो है केमिकल फैक्ट्रीज है टेक्सटाइल फैक्ट्रीज है और स्टील्स की जो भी बड़ी-बड़ी फैक्ट्रीज है तो डेवलपमेंट इतना होता है ट्रांसपोर्टेशन जो ट्रांसपोर्टेशन आज मेन चीज होती है आज कोई भी लॉजिस्टिक्स फैक्टर्स के अंदर उसका भी बहुत बड़ा ट्रांजैक्शन डेवलपमेंट हुआ है तो ऑब्वियसली आज छोटे पोर्ट में डेवलपमेंट जितना भी होगा तो उसके सराउंडिंग जितने भी एक्टिविटीज छोटे-छोटे लोग की हैं वो सब एक्टिविटीज को ग्रोथ मिलना है सब एक्टिविटीज को कहीं ना कहीं फायदा होने वाला है अंडर चीफ मिनिस्टर भूपेंद्र पटेल द गुजरात गवर्नमेंट इज एडवांसिंग नरेंद्र मोदीज विजन ऑफ हार्नेसिंग द ब्लू इकॉनमी थ्रू द पीएम गति शक्ति गुजरात इनिशिएटिव one key project is a 350 km south coastal corridor part of a 1761 km route from Umargam to Narayan Sarovar which aims to enhance industrial connectivity boost tourism and improve access to ports like the Hage and Hazira for faster cargo movement this initiative will strengthen industrial connectivity and unlock the tourism potential of the region That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.